Welcome to this video tutorial on how to export a 2D drawing from Rhino into Illustrator. In this tutorial I've created a simple 2D drawing from my 3D model here using the Make2D function. We're now going to go into our top view to be able to accurately see our 2D drawing and it's important that whenever we export out any 2D geometry from Rhino we do it within the top view to make sure it's flat to the surface of the drawing when we open it up in Illustrator. In order to export this drawing, I'm going to just select all of those layers here, go to File, Export Selected, and then make sure we're saving it out as an Illustrator file, like Adobe AI there. Once we've got that, we're going to give it a title, and then we're going to hit the Save button here to save that drawing. When we bring this out we have two options, we can either preserve the model scale where we can save this at a very particular scale that we want or we can use a snapshot of the current view. For mine I'm just going to be doing a snapshot at this point but I recommend if you're using Mac to preserve the model scale and give yourself a scale that will make sure it will fit on the Illustrator board. The main thing with Illustrator is we can't work at a one-to-one -one scale like we can in Rhino because Illustrator's artboard has a max size that it works with, unlike Rhino where you can infinitely zoom in and out. So for this I'm just going to use a snapshot, but as said I've seen a few glitches with the Mac version of Rhino which when you do a snapshot of the view it doesn't appear when you open it up in Illustrator, so in that case just use the preserve model scale and give yourself a particular scale that you want to work with. Once you're happy with that setting, we're going to hit OK to save that file. Once that's saved, we're then going to open up that Illustrator file in Illustrator, just by double clicking on the file, like so. Once that file's open, you should get a view like this, where we've got our layers, which will match the layers we brought in from Rhino, and then we'll have our object in the middle of the artboard, like so. Usually if you're using a snapshot of the current view, it might come in quite small on your artboard. So I'll usually just select the geometry, pick that corner, anchor there, hold the shift key to lock that in, and just scale this up to the artboard size. Sometimes as well it's quite useful to reset the Illustrator artboard to match your frame of your image here. And we can do that just in the document setup under edit artboards, and then we can just click and drag those anchors on that Illustrator artboard to match my frame, like so. Now you can see we have all of our layers in here which match up to our kind of line work that we had in Rhino as well. Now what we might want to do is add on very particular line weights to each of these layers, and we can do this just by selecting each of these layers and changing the line work up in this stroke panel. You can quickly change the line weight of an object just by clicking on this little circle next to the layer to select all of those lines within that layer and then you can change the line weight up in the stroke panel here. We can also change the colour either by going to our colour panel here and picking a colour or you can do it down in these colour settings here. You'll see if you get this weird sort of fill colour that's because we're located in the fill instead of the stroke so you have to click each one independently to switch between the fill of an item and the stroke of that item. So if we click on the fill and just click this little none here, it will remove any fill colour there as well. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to go through and quickly create all of these layers and we're just going to make them all black to start with, just by selecting all of them at once and clicking on the black icon there as well. Then what we're going to do is we're going to just select some of the curves that we want, which are the visible ones, and we'll put these at let's say a 0.5. And you can see here we've got this sort of visible curves versus hidden. So this kind of tells us exactly kind of which lines are which in the scene to help us set those line weights. For my hidden lines, I want these to be a lot lighter. So we're going to put these on a 0 0.15 like so. And we're going to change that stroke to a dashed line, but a very thin dashed line. We're going to do it two by two here, just under that stroke panel like so. And there you can see that's the hidden line. If you want any lines to kind of match any previous lines you've drawn, we can always select a layer. So for instance, we'll select these hidden lines, pick up our eyedropper tool, and just click on a previous line we've made, and it will match that line to the previous one to allow us to very easily and quickly match up any lines together. So let's just do the same for these hidden lines here as well. 
Now we also have this scene silhouette, which you can see in the layers titled scene silhouette, which are the kind of outline lines here of our full object. And what we can do with this, I'm going to make this slightly thicker. Let's just do this at a 1.5 for now to give us a slightly thicker outline to the object, like so. You'll find with the scene silhouette that sometimes it's not quite perfect. There might be a few gaps in it, which we might need to tidy up after we're finished. So let's just go around these, upping that line weight to 1.5. And then we can just have a look and you can see here there's a little piece missing. So what I usually do is I'll just lock all the layers apart from one of those scene silhouette layers, take my pen tool and just use it to join up any of those missing pieces, hitting the escape tool to end that pen tool as well. So we'll just join, hit escape on the keyboard to end it and just use it to kind of join up any of those extra edges like so. And that looks pretty good there. So there we just have a quick video tutorial on how to take our 2D line work from Rhino, bring it into Illustrator and start to tidy up those line weights within Illustrator. I hope you found this video series useful on essentials to Rhino and how to bring that into Illustrator for 2D drawing. And if you want to watch any other videos on Rhino, rendering and CAD skills, please do check out some of the videos on my channel. Thanks for watching.